Hi, and welcome back to part one of our vibrator series. Let's start with the basics. What is a vibrator? Well, the bottom line is that a vibrator is anything that vibrates. For example, a dildo, which is something that you insert into your body but doesn't vibrate, wouldn't be considered a vibrator. However, this, on the other hand, would be a vibrator. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's vibrating in my hand. Vibrators come in lots of different shapes and sizes. They can be big, small, meant to go outside of your body or inside of your body. They can be graphic looking, like real penises, or innocent looking, like Hello Kitty. But what delineates a vibrator is that it vibrates. That's it which is why something that you also use as a neck massager or a back massager can also double as a vibrator. I was once giving a lecture to a group of women and I showed them this, the Hitachi Magic Wand, and a woman in the audience said, oh my God, I've had that thing sitting by my bed for a few years, it's my back massager. It never occurred to me to use it as a vibrator. To which I replied, you my dear, clearly have a lack of imagination. Okay, let's move on. When would you use a vibrator? There are a lot of misconceptions out there about when it's appropriate to use a vibrator and when it's not. Somehow people have decided that vibrators are only intended for solo sex or masturbation. But I have news for you, that's simply not true. Vibrators can be used anywhere, anytime, Okay, maybe not anywhere, anytime, because you know you probably don't wanna use it in public, but you kinda of get my drift, right? Whether you are by yourself or with your partner, those are both equally appropriate times to use a vibrator. Please take this in. There's no rule, and it's definitely not true that you can only use a vibrator if you're masturbating by yourself. And it's certainly not true that you can only use a vibrator if you're with your partner. And there are no specific vibrators for this purpose or for that purpose. Any vibrator can be used at any time. And as I said to you in the introduction, the orgasms you have from the vibrator can be faster and can be easier. And for some women, the orgasms are better. And so there will be hopefully many times and situations in which you might choose or you might want to use a vibrator. The world of vibrators can seem overwhelming because it feels as though there are hundreds of thousands of different kinds of vibrators out there. And on the one hand, there are. Vibrators have been produced in so many different shapes and so many different sizes and so many different colors and so many different materials that can feel overwhelming. But the truth is that once you understand probably four or five categories of vibrators, you're good to go. You'll essentially have a good grasp on all of them because they really do all fall into just a few different categories. Now let's look at the categories of vibrators that are out there. The first and most important distinction for you to be aware of is internal versus external vibrators. That is ones that are meant to put inside your vagina and ones that are meant to go outside of your body. Internal versus external. So here's an example of an internal vibrator. It's meant to go inside your vagina. And here's an example of an external vibrator. It's funny to me that when people talk about vibrators, more often than not, they think about these vibrators, the ones that are internal ones, even though they are by far less useful and less effective for helping women orgasm. But let's talk about internal vibrators. Usually when a woman is having trouble with an orgasm, an internal vibrator is not what she wants. She wants a vibrator that goes outside. And I'll talk about that in depth in part two of this series. But right now, I'll spend a few minutes on internal vibrators because they are important also. Internal vibrators are simply meant to be used if you wanna have something in your vagina. That might be because you feel like it'll feel good and your partner doesn't have a penis, or you currently don't have a partner, or it can even be because you're trying to stretch out those muscles to get them ready for a partner's penis, or because just you and your partner think it will be fun. I want to add here that in general, it's a good idea to have something in your vagina at least once in a while, be it a penis or an internal vibrator. It's important to have something in your vagina that brings in the blood flow, 
It keeps your vagina kind of moving and moist and active. So while internal vibrators are less good at helping you have an orgasm, these would be some of the reasons you might want to use internal vibrators. Internal vibrators mimic a penis. They don't actually have to look like a penis, but they are sort of the shape of a penis. And you always know an internal vibrator because they are cylindrical. They're long and thin in some way or other because they're meant to go in and out of your vagina. They come in a wide variety of materials and sizes. Here are two internal vibrators so you can see the difference. They're both extremely soft, these vibrators, and one is obviously much larger than the other one, right? Now, when you're picking an internal vibrator, you should be thinking about what would feel good inside your specific vagina and not some ideal. Are you somebody who likes a lot of heft inside your vagina? Or are you somebody who prefers less pressure, less size, something smaller? Either way, it's good. It's just a personal preference. Besides size, you may want to determine how realistic a vibrator you want to use. Some internal vibrators are intended to look very realistic and penis-like. This one, for example, is a little penis-like. Others are all pink and girlfriendy looking, like this one. They all serve the same fun function. It's merely how they look and what seems like it will work best for you and what seems most comfortable to you. So that's your basic intro into internal vibrators. Now the other category distinction which is relevant, is battery-operated versus chargeable vibrators. Once upon a time, they were only either battery-operated or ones that got plugged into the wall. And to get a nice, strong vibration, you had to use the plug-ins. And that was complicated because it was irritating to have to use a cord while you were having sex. I used to joke around that you should be careful because you might end up strangling your partner. But nowadays, the plug-in ones are all mostly chargeable, and that makes life a whole lot easier. So let me show you some classic battery operated ones and let me show you some classic plug-in or chargeable ones. And you'll start to see yourself with the differences. This is a battery operated one. It's small, right? This is another battery operated one. I think you're gonna pick up pretty quickly that they're cute and little and subtle and sort of non-invasive looking. And these battery operated ones, they're much less strong. The chargeable ones, on the other hand, are the ones that are more like this. This is the famous magic wand vibrator, and it's huge. People always make jokes that it looks like a blender. Well, I think it looks more like a microphone. You could sing with it. There are plenty of external ones that are much smaller and chargeable than this one. For example, this one. The advantage of these vibrators are that they last much longer than the battery operated ones and they are much more powerful than the battery operated ones. Just note, the internal ones, the ones I showed you before, are generally battery operated and they, have le and they tend to be less strong and they have to have their batteries replaced and that's something to keep in mind. I also do wanna remind you that any vibrator can be used anywhere on your body. So there's really no rule about this, even though technically the vibrator that you're using is meant to go inside your vagina, you can use it outside. You can use them on your clitoris. You can use them on your vulva. You can use them anywhere you want. You can use them on the arm or your ear or any place you want. Before I leave the topic of internal vibrators, I'm gonna point out one more internal vibrator and that would be this one. So this vibrator has a curve and some, and some internal vibrators are made with curves specifically to be able to stimulate your G-spot. Let me digress for one moment to discuss the G-spot. The G-spot is a spot about an inch or two in your vaginal canal. If you go like this with your finger, you can usually feel it. It's a little spongy. The G-spot exists for every woman, but it's not sexually pleasurable for every woman. Some women love the experience of G-spot stimulation. Others could take it or leave it. So first you have to decide if you like G-spot stimulation and then you could use your finger to figure that out. Does that feel really good to you? And if it does, then you could look for an internal vibrator that curves or has some kind of element that stimulates the G-spot. This internal vibrator actually is chargeable. It's meant to be used internally and externally. And because it's chargeable, it lasts longer and is a bit stronger. But again, most internal vibrators tend to be battery operated. 
So that's it for your introduction to internal vibrators. And stay tuned because on the next video, I will talk about external vibrators or vibrators that are meant to be used outside your vagina, generally on your vulva and on your clitoris. For the most part, women like to use external vibrators because that is how they have the optimum amount of pleasure. See you on the next video.